This is Baby Boomer Tales, and my name is Jim. Once a quarter, we do a silver edition of Baby Boomer Tales, something from the first 100 episodes, usually. We're going to play episode 95 from November of 2020, titled Stella's. We're playing it in its entirety. We'll just let it finish up today. I want to thank you for riding along. Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name is Jim. Thank you for riding along with me today. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once at the website, there are links to Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and so many more places that you can access our podcast. Also, there's links for our Facebook page, our Patreon page, our Amazon store, and more. When I was a kid, during the summer, I remember we'd be playing in the yard, maybe trying to argue with mom, trying to postpone taking a bath or something. And all of a sudden, she'd get this little gleam in her eye, and she'd go over to my dad and say, let's take a little ride. We'd all pile in our station wagon, mom and dad in the front, a couple of us in the far back, rolling around and a couple in the back seat and we'd drive downtown and cruise Maine once or twice and we'd go out west of town where all the motels were we'd check out every motel in town see if they had a no vacancy sometimes we'd go up to the campground about nine miles north of us we never went all the way up to the lake town on our evening rides but we'd drive through that campground and all these people and campers and Shasta trailers. We'd be sitting there with a little campfire going. We'd drive all around that campground, kind of see what was going on. Go back to town, pull into the Dairy King. It was all lit up and neon lights. You have to walk up to the window and order couple of us would go with dad and we'd get everybody a soft serve ice cream cone go back in the car eat our ice cream and talk about the motels why aren't they full tonight did you see how many people were in the campground doesn't make sense that the motels don't all have no vacancies tonight that was a nice display that francis and elaine put up in their window there at the trading post What is that old car that's been sitting out in front of the store, Dad? Can we honk when we go by Grandpa's pool hall? We finish our ice cream and cruise Maine one more time, then go on home. Then we'd be taking our baths and getting ready for bed. I always fought those baths, but I was dirty, I'll tell you that now. Part of my thing, especially before the big lockdown of 2020, would be going looking for the perfect hamburger. Now I know where there's some pretty good ones and I know a lot of places that brag about their burgers and I wouldn't eat one two times in a row for nothing. I feel like I make one of the best hamburgers around. We've spoken of that before and I'm not bragging. It's my mouth talking. Well, one of my favorite of all times hamburger was at that Dairy King back in my old hometown. You go there and you order a hamburger and you come back and there's a little bit of mustard on it and one or two slices of pickle, maybe a little ketchup and it would be all loose meat. We called them Stella Burgers. Stella was the lady that owned the Dairy King and those hamburgers were famous far and wide. You could eat two or three of them no problem whatsoever. They were just delicious I don't care what you might think about regular meat patty opposed to loose meat. That Stella burger is second to none. 
That Dairy King, when I was a kid, you go down there during the daytime, sometimes like late morning, order a chocolate Coke or something. And one of your friends would be working around there, emptying trash and sweeping the concrete in front of the windows there. Stella would always be working in there all the time. She was always there. You couldn't go inside the restaurant. It was just a walk up only. They didn't have car hops like the A&W that came to town years later. They had car hops and everyone thought that was just great and everything. And You know what? It might have affected Stella's business little, but it could never replace Stella. A Papa Burger could not even compete with a Stella Burger, even though the Papa Burgers were quite delicious. Having your favorite cheerleader be in the car hop that came up to your window and brought you a frosty mug of root beer had nothing, nothing on walking up to the window and seeing Vicky or Christine and ordering a cherry Coke and a fried pie. A fried pie is one of those hostess fruit pies that are deep fat fried, put in a little paper boat, have powdered sugar sprinkled on it. Man, those were better than a apple pie your grandma make. Almost. And then a Stella burger. I don't know where Stella got that recipe for that. Sometimes you see on discussions on a group I belong to from the county I grew up in. Once in a while, people start talking about the Stella Burger. And people claim that they know a place that serves the exact same thing. But through all my years, I have never found any place, even relatively close to that Stella Burger. Now, they don't mistake them for a sloppy Joe or something, because they're not even related, even though they both have hamburger and both of them are loose meat. I wouldn't really call Stella Burger a hamburger, but I think that's what it'd be classified. But I always believed it was in a class by itself. Maybe not any better than a hamburger, but definitely stood shoulder to shoulder with one, at least in my heart. Go around there and see Stella in the back. She very seldom manned the window. She always had usually a high school girl, sometimes one of your buddies, like old John, he's the one that got me eating shrimp steak sandwiches. I decided I was probably about 20. I was going to turn into a non-meat eater for a while. That was during the peace, love, all that stuff. And I was starving to death. I've never been a big one for vegetables. They're okay in their place. But so I was there lamenting not being able to order a Stella burger, and old John said, try a shrimp steak sandwich. I just had one. They're pretty good. And I don't know what they were, but they were in a patty shape, and it must have been some form of fish. And that was okay on my non-beef diet to have a little bit of fish, but it wasn't a fish sandwich. And it was absolutely delicious. You put mustard and ketchup and pickles and onions, just like you would a hamburger. And I loved those things. I got so I was eating two or three of them a day, trying to supplement my craving for red meat. And then one day, the shrimp steak sandwich went away, never to return to the Dairy King ever again. I asked Del about them, and she gave me some explanation, and I was satisfied with that explanation, I believe. Del had a daughter named Jo, and she seemed to always be at the Dairy King working also. It was a lot of work. I think anybody that's ever worked in a restaurant understands what I'm saying. Later on in life, Joe became a town policeman. And just to show what it's like to be from a small town, you just kind of cruise around and looking around and not going very fast. You come to an intersection, you kind of slow down a little, ease through the intersection, and maybe you turn left at the park. Maybe you think I should drive down that alley again and see if old such and such is throwing out anything good. One day I kind of came to an intersection. I slowed down. I guess I thought I stopped. Just regular, you know. Looked both ways. Started through the intersection and I hear the siren behind me. I had no idea. I wasn't even looking in my rearview mirror. It was Joe in the cop car. 
Pulled me over. <laughs> oh, Joe, what's going on? Why in the world would you be stopping me? She said, well, you didn't stop at that stop sign. So I had two reactions. Number one, yes, I did stop. Number two, what stop sign? And so she pointed at the stop sign. She said, you just rolled through it, Jim. I go, well, to my defense, I didn't even know there was a stop sign there. How long has that been there anyway, Joe? Joe says, well, I'm older than you, Jim. It's been here ever since I can remember. Well, okay, you're not going to give me a ticket, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to give you a ticket. Just try stopping at the stop signs. Okay, Joe, I don't know if I ever stopped at any stop sign when you come to mention it there, but I'll do my best. You know, to this day, I come to a stop sign in a small town or a rural road. I think of old Joe stopping me that day. She is a pretty good cop. She is a hard worker, helped her mom. I mentioned her the other day, blowing the fire siren down at the firehouse, the noon whistle. So she was all over the place, and she was right behind me that day. <laughs> I mean, the town cop just doesn't stop you. Uh, not very often, anyway. I can still remember driving through town on a Friday night, going to the west, looking to my left, and there's the Dairy King. And it was like an island of light. Everything's kind of dark at night, but there was neon lights and street lights, and the parking lot was lit up good, and that neon wrapping the building, little bitty building there with two walk-up windows. It was a warm, comforting, welcoming place. I never, ever knew anyone that was dissatisfied when they stopped at the Dairy King to get a milkshake or a root beer float or a fried pie or a chocolate dip cone, or vanilla Coke, or Stella Burger. You see these things all the time. If you could go back in time and do something one more time, what would it be? Usually when I see something like that, I always think, I get me a couple Stella Burgers every time. It's not like I wish I could walk on the seashore one more time. I wish I could talk to this person one more time. Well, sure, I'd like to talk to mom or dad one more time. Maybe we could share a bag of Stella Burgers. The Dairy King and the little town I was raised in is definitely an icon of my childhood that carries on over the years and never seems to ever quite leave me. There are many people and homes and businesses and landmarks and places that always stay with me that are a result of my first 40 years on this earth in that beautiful county in north central Colorado. Do you have a place like that? A memory that you hold dear in your heart of someone or something taste or smell, a memory of somebody's eyes or the way that somebody talked or your favorite restaurant or your favorite old person or your best friend when you were a kid. I believe things like that that stay with us all of our life is truly a gift from God. Don't take it lightly. I hope you remember those things with a smile. Stella sold that restaurant later on. I was a young adult, maybe married and having kids by then, to a lady named Dolly. And Dolly had a Dolly burger. It was a cheeseburger that was very, very good. And I'm sure she probably didn't call it the Dolly burger, but I always referred to it as that. And I enjoyed those very much. And she made the Dairy King into a restaurant that you could go in and sit down. So really everything had changed from the days when Stella was in the restaurant all day, every day, all summer long. Cruise up there and smile at the gal at the window. Each kind of tease each other just a bit. Then you make your order. They bring it right there to the window. You pay them and thank them and maybe get in your truck and go on. 
We'll go around the corner and sit at the picnic table. Bite that chocolate, that hard chocolate, off of your dip cone. You know it's causing that soft serve under it to melt a little. Life is good. All is well. Never forsake being kind. I'll be back next Wednesday.